Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this project. I bought a broken Anycubic Cobra 3 combo from eBay because I needed the cheapest additional Ace Pro possible for eight color printing on my Cobra 3 Max. What makes this cheap is that if I can fix this Cobra 3, I can sell it for a final price on the Ace that nobody could ever offer. I did have to put some money into it and the final total was well worth it. It wasn't a walk in the park though, and I did learn a few things I get to share with you. So to my door, this thing was $200, which isn't that great a deal to a newbie because you can buy a refurbished one for $300 or, or a brand new combo for $400 as a filming. But I know how to fix things and you're here because you can too. If I can fix this, I can turn it around locally for about $125, meaning that as it stands, this Ace Pro would have a final cost of about $75. And when compared to buying a new one at $290 on sale, you can get why I'm excited about this. The two big issues the listing had was a detached screen and a broken filament hub. Seems like easy issues and comparable broken Cobra 3s were a little cheaper, but did not have things like the $30 build plate brand new for what would have been a $10 discount over the $200. The listing did say it turned on, but it hasn't been tested any more than that. Again, as long as it's not bent, we can fix this. The filament hub was a bigger pain in the butt than I expected and had to sink a little money in there, but we'll cover that in a minute. I might have messed up the audio while unboxing, so don't mind me silently talking into the void. All right, but before opening it, we have the original box. This is promising, except when we did open it, it was just that, the original box. The printer and ace were just tossed in there with some paper padding, so yes, we have some shipping damage to fix. It did have the manual and all the parts though, which was great, even if it did take me a minute to look into the ace for all the parts, including the screen, which had me worried at first, because that is expensive to replace. And I was worried we'd have a lot more to replace. Now I'd have to talk to the seller since it was in the original listing. We found it and the rest of the parts. While I left the screen all flippity floopy, I later realized it just screws in at some point. It'll just be there in the videos. Looking at the filament hub, it's not the actual filament hub that's broken, but rather the mount which goes deep into the print head. That was not looking good. However, the hole for the filament was accessible, so that is a later me kind of problem. Looking over the printer, I see the bed and print head have been popped off their rails a bit, still securely on the rails, but the bed is too wobbly to print with, and the head actually refused to move at all. Honestly, at this point, I'm actually feeling good about my decision here. I just need to finish unboxing it. Head over to PCB Way. You can upload your model, choose quantity, material, color, infill, and more, and have a team of professionals print it for you. You wouldn't have to worry about any nozzle clogs, bed adhesion issues, or any other issues I'm about to deal with, and get your print within a few days. PCBWay also offers CNC machining, custom PCBs, PCB assembly. New customers can save $5 using my link in the description below. Before we print, we have to fix some of this mess. And my first goal, before I call this a win, is if I can do a single color print using a concept that is the bane of my career in IT, minimum viable product. The minimum we have to do to get this working. In our case, that means fixing each axis movement, plugging it in, calibrating, before printing a simple benchy. First is the build plate. It's not loose enough to remove, but way too loose to actually print on. I remove the build plate and unscrew the heating surface to access the wheels underneath. The wheels were a tad loose and I tightened them up a bit, but that wasn't the actual root cause of the issue. Mine has a nut in the middle of two of the wheels, and this is called the eccentric nut, and you adjust this to adjust how much the whole bed unit grips the rails, which happens to be our problem. Tight enough there's no wiggle, but not so tight your poor stepper motor can't move it. Nice and snug with what you'd imagine is only some motor resistance when you do move it. There is a harmonic measure you should do on the belt, but I don't have the values with me nor the app on my phone. 
I'll probably follow up another video. It's good enough. With the bed fix, this extruder also has an eccentric nut underneath the head at the bottom that we'd have to adjust, but it was stuck in right in front of one of the support arms. Luckily, we just needed a little nudge. It popped back on so I could move it and adjust the nut underneath. Not a lot to say since there wasn't a lot of drama there. The arms also did wiggle a bit and there are more eccentric nuts on the inside of the wheels along the pillar. All right, everything seemed tight, snug and moves. Dare I say we might be ready to test this thing. A quick check and there is some old filament in the nozzle but a visual inspection says it looks like it's still in good condition. So we're just gonna send it. I have a leftover roll of pink PLA filament we can feed into this hole on the extruder and selected a Benchy on the USB stick. I prefer to test in stages to isolate issues. So if I print from internal storage, I know there aren't any issues from say the slicer as unlikely that would be anyway. One Benchy later, and there is no doubt in my mind, we can continue with the Cobra to restore it with only the ACE being the only possible blocker to multicolor printing now. If this idea is a total failure, at least I can recoup some of my cost. Time for some meat and potatoes. Can we use the ACE for some multicolor prints? If so, then we saved a significant amount of money compared to new or refurbished. So far, our biggest issue is the lack of filament hub. So we need to pop off the print head and have a look. There are four screws on the back and two holding the USB cable that we need to remove to get it on our workbench. Squeeze the bottom of the print head to remove the cover and the broken plastic is part of the extruder housing containing a fair amount of little parts. It's also complex enough I can't just scan the housing to print a replacement. Luckily, it's $25 for a complete unit and since I intend to sell this to a friend, we're gonna do just that, so I can guarantee it's had the best possible repair. And a few days later, the replacement arrived. It's kind of a mess to replace, but not difficult. The biggest issue was a single screw behind more other screws with a spring in it. I was able to unscrew it, the screw underneath, but not completely remove it using a long Allen wrench. But on the new extruder, I did have to remove the screw with a spring to reinstall the screw underneath. And of course, you can play this video into reverse to reinstall. All back together, screw in the filament hub for the four color support, run these PTFE tubes from the ACE to the hub through the side of the printer. I wanna test another one color print, but this time from my ACE, just to again, isolate any issues I may have from replacing the extruder and adding a simple test for my ACE. If you think I'm over testing, I think it's really important here because the next step is multicolor. And by running another print, I can cross off the extruder and ACE communication from any future troubleshooting if this works. Another successful print. This is looking good. This was money well spent. So Mario is a the theme of the month in this family with the Switch 2 release. And I need something I can test printing all four colors with. First, I need a poop in and deflector because the printer poop is just as bad as stepping on a Lego, especially on this concrete floor. So I was actually doing that on my P1S in PETG so the PLA doesn't stick to it. Let's start with the Yoshi print that actually uses five colors. But we can fudge the yellow boots to match the red, and now we have red, green, white, and black. I did have a failed first print because it lost adhesion, so I scrubbed the print bed with some soap and water, which I should have done earlier anyway. Probably had a bunch of dust from the warehouse and shipping, but the second attempt here looks good. My son loves this little dinosaur. If you have kids, then you know that you don't want anyone to feel left out, whether uh, it's on purpose or not. So I found this three color mushroom for my daughter 
And best of all, I don't have to open, store, change filaments because we need red, white, and black. I added a brim this time just in case the adhesion was still an issue, but regardless, again, the final print looks good. We ended up with some good quality prints and ultimately a restored printer that I would call unofficially refurbished. However, I don't need the Cobra 3 since I have an A1 Mini, a P1S, and a Cobra 3 Max. So I'm going to sell this printer itself for probably 125 ish maybe 100 depending on if that friend wants it or how motivated I am. My total cost ended up being about $225 including the $25 extruder, so maybe a $300 refurbished printer for many cubic is a better move for you, but I'm pretty content saving $75. However, that savings was a gamble and it doesn't always work out like that. With the release of the Cobra 3 V2, you can probably get these even cheaper now. If I sell a printer for $125, that means my final cost for the Ace Pro, which is on sale for $290, remember that, has the adjusted price of about $100. So this truly was the cheapest way to get another Ace Pro. Even if this doesn't work with my Cobra 3, can't imagine why it wouldn't, I can sell these separately for a small profit. I'm extremely happy with the final result since that Ace Pro is so expensive on its own. With the V2 pre-order out there, I did some math on the early bird price they had and the combo is $180 more than just the printer. So it's $180 for the Ace, your first Ace. But if you select the eight color option, it adds $260 for another ace. And mine was cheaper than any combo price they could give. I've slowly learned that the early bird price is essentially the occasional sale price. So you're probably not missing out on that, to be honest. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, dislike, subscribe if you want some more, and I'll see you in the next one.